Meanwhile, a federal grand jury has indicted a former attorney for the Democratic National Committee. According to the indictment, Michael Sussman allegedly made false claims to the FBI when he was advising Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign. Sussman told the FBI that the Trump organization was communicating with the Russian-based Alpha Bank. But when the FBI investigated the claims, it found there was insufficient evidence to support them. We all know that the Russia collusion story with Trump was made up and a complete lie. New York Post columnist and Fox News contributor Miranda Devine is with me now to talk more about that and some of these other stories in the news. Miranda, great to see you. We've been waiting and waiting for John Durham to uh, come up with some indictments. What's your take on this indictment of Michael Sussman? Well, look, it's a great start, and uh, I think it should make the naysayers um, be quiet for a little while and just allow John Durham to do his work. I mean, this is very interesting. Um, the indictment, I mean, it's more than just lying to the FBI uh, with this lawyer. It's also, uh, he seemed to be uh, engaged actively in propagating this completely false story about um, Donald Trump. And uh, he's, uh, you know, Im implicated in Hillary Clinton's campaign, who were actively sowing this misinformation and this lie that ended up uh, leading to the impeachment of Donald Trump. And we know a lot of these stories because they've been told by, um, you know, I mean, Devin Nunes and uh, various authors have written books. And uh, I think what Durham is doing is picking up the pieces in between. And, you know, there's also uh, involvement of, there's someone called, we don't know who it is, um, but uh, Tech Executive One, we're told, uh, is, mm. is part of this, some very powerful and high up tech executive who also was involved in creating this lie to smear Donald Trump. It's very disturbing and it's great yeah. that it's being forensically looked at and people are now being indicted. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it, it, unfortunately, the damage has been done. We had a four-year period when the, almost oh, yeah. virtually the entire country was saying that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians. I mean, from, from day one, I said, I don't see any evidence of this. This is not true. And, of course, God forbid you went uh, 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 against the mobs <laughs> who decided that Trump colluded. You, you, you were really attacked. Uh, but we'll see. Isn't the statute of limitations coming up? Uh, will he be able to come up with any other indictments? Because we knew that the dossier was garbage in January of 2017. The FBI knew that the dossier was all made up in 2017, in January, and yet they proceeded, the FBI did, after doing interviews with the writers of the dossier, they proceeded to give it to the media and uh, let, let the country speculate, even though they knew it wasn't true. So I'm wondering if we're going to see any indictments at the FBI. Well, I don't know, but you, you have to look at the media and their complicity as well. I mean, people knew it was obvious. The dossier was absurd on its face. There was never any attempt to do any yeah. proper due diligence on it. It was just accepted and disseminated immediately and then That's salivated right. over uh, and did enormous damage to the administration. And, you know, just the other day, you had McCabe there uh, on, on uh, you know, on CNN, and nobody asks him the question. Nobody asks him. Yeah, right. And they just get away with it. I mean, many of them who were involved in this collusion were paid by MSNBC and CNN as, you know, esteemed members of the media. Uh, James Clapper, right. John Brennan, uh, you know, they, they yeah. all seem to be getting this media protection. Yeah, and, and part of the reason is some of the media, they got pulled surprises for these lies. James Freeman and I wrote a yeah. book called The Cost, Trump, China, and American Revival. And in that book, we have an entire chapter talking about the fact that the Washington Post and the New York Times got pulled surprises for the lies. James, you want to weigh in here real quick? Yeah, they've been uh, congratulating themselves for years on this really shameful uh, period in the history of our industry. And I, I think that this is one of the questions. The, obviously, Mr. Sussman deserves the presumption of innocence. He'll get to defend himself. But... Uh, this charge of, of lying to the FBI, pretending he was a concerned citizen coming forward with information, concealing the fact, allegedly, that he worked for the Clinton campaign and this was a Clinton uh, dirt operation to gin up an FBI That's investigation, 
it does raise the question about the people in our industry. Are they, were they dupes mm. or were they complicit? Did they know where this was yeah. coming from? And I, I don't think we'll ever get an honest accounting uh, from all those people who handed prizes to each other. That's right. And, and, and even after all of these years, they still won't admit it. But look, Miranda, I want to talk about your op-ed this morning as well in the New York Post. You are saying that the most disturbing part of the claims that General Milley made secret phone calls to Chinese officials is that it seems like House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is pulling the strings for Milley. Uh, you say Milley treated Pelosi as his commander-in-chief, and she bullied and manipulated him. Talk about your op-ed. You say this isn't the only time Pelosi has influenced Milley. No, and, you know, we're taking uh, what was said in the Bob Woodward book uh, as true, but it's not just his book. There are at least two other books uh, which outline exactly the same chain of events. And in every case, you have Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker. Uh, it began in before this, but it... Uh, very obviously after the Lafayette Square photo opportunity where Donald Trump stood in front of St John's Church, which had been firebombed uh, by uh, Antifa and BLM rioters uh, on the night that he was and his family were whisked into a bunker for safety because this was an insurgency at the door of the White House. And after that Lafayette Square uh, plaza was cleared by the Park Police so that Secret Service could put up uh, barriers to safeguard the White House. Um, General Milley gets phone calls from uh, from from Nancy Pelosi, you know, screaming it. I mean, this sh this was her mo. She used to ring up people like Mark Milley and scream at him because she was afflicted by a very bad case of Trump derangement sy syndrome. She was completely hysterical and paranoid and over yeah. the top, and she was demanding that he curtail the power of the president. And instead of telling her that she was uh, being neurotic and to stay in her lane and that this was a wholly inappropriate uh, request, General Milley, according to these books, appeared to go out and do her bidding. And in one case, he's ringing up his Chinese counterpart and saying, don't, if, if, don't worry, we're not going to go and do anything. I will give you a heads up if we decide to attack you without telling the president, usurping the president's power. And Nancy Pelosi was behind it. So dangerous, Miranda. And this is why I keep saying we need term limits. You cannot have somebody in office there for tens years, decades and decades and decades. I mean, oftentimes what you find mm. happening is they forget who they're working for. They forget that they're actually working yeah. for the American people and should not keep driving their own narrative. Uh, I don't know why there's not more talk about term limits for Congress. Absolutely. I mean, I think that would solve a lot of problems. Um, you know, you have a yeah. people like Nancy Pelosi in their 80s who are drunk on power and because they've had power That's for right. so long. She's she's the, the queen of Congress and uh, she just there's no limit to what she will do to um, to seize power and to grasp it and to create this narrative that is so evil and wrong and against the American people's interests and to uh, for her to go um, try and usurp the power of the third branch of government is terrifying and even more terrifying of course is the fact that the chairman of the joint chiefs would go along with it and he seemed to have caught yeah. a case of trump derangement syndrome himself calling trump hitler and calling That's his right. supporters brown shirts unbelievable all so dangerous miranda please come back soon love having you this morning thank you very much miranda devine joining us from the new york post